most of it. It's a gift. We got to go, baby. We got to get up and go. Are you okay? Are you okay? I think she blinded me. What? No, no, she blinded me. I'm, I'm. <laughs> and you look as Percy, eyes wide open, glancing about, the pupils moving about, he. Yes, I'm blinded. I'm blind. Okay. Really? Really, and we I. Should, we should test it out. Yeah, how many fingers am I holding up? <laughs> One. <laughs> <laughs> He's a liar, he can see fine. He's a shit person. You, you, you're not gonna shoot a puppy, are you, Jack? Yeah, in the face, why? Yo, the D20 popcorn buggy from the movie is amazing. Well, let's see what's inside. Tim, man, what are you doing here? Mom, 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 uh, what does this do? What, what, what can I do? Come on, when are we gonna get to the killing? Ugh, no mom and isn't a phase, and making an edgy rogue character has nothing to do with it. Gosh, I'd rather go out and party with my friends. Oh, what was I thinking? This game's awesome! Now all I need is friends. I put my retirement fund on minis, maps, a D&D &D gaming table, and a miniature-sized town that you guys won't even visit. What? I need to roll what? B, honey! Why do I need to roll B, honey? Who are you? I'm still here. Do you have a bathroom, though? It's outside. Oh, I can hold it. There's a little bit of piss in the oratory. <laughs> well, don't they know it? <laughs> Is that how you say oh. you've pissed in the oratory? It's a very rude question. He's very brave. I, I just... I messaged you, let's button it up. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I piss a little bit wherever I go. <laughs> That's my secret, Pinocchio. I'm always pacing. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Happening. Is this kind of like a dominance thing, or is this like a medical? Little from a column A, <laughs> little from column B. It is a dominance thing that also I medically cannot stop. <laughs> can't stop being dominant. You know what? Can't, can't stop, stop being dominant. dominant. That's my workout t-shirt. <laughs> stop being dominant. Stay dominant. <laughs> Hello there, Traveler. Welcome to Quincy's Tavern. My name is Quincy. What can I get for you? Health potions. Of course. How many do you want? <laughs> that many. Alright, do you sure you have enough space for all that? If you say so. How about this? How about I teach you how to make these? That way, you can do whatever you want with them. Alright. Come on. Follow me.
Mod Traveler. One common health potion. It's a bit simple by some standards and a bit more complicated to others, but that's how we do it here. Also, for your party, because you're going back out into the battlefield, you'll need something to keep yourselves up. But, you'll be safe out there. Excuse me, ladies. May I give you some flowers? Oh, those are little things. Yes. Here you go. Yeah. Here you go. Yeah. Do you accept my gifts? Yeah. Congratulations! By accepting your gifts, you are now contractually obligated to work in my vineyard for the next five thousand years. Oh. Without further ado, follow me. Work starts right away. Are you ready to start stomping on some grapes? Just like this. Let's practice, Sorry, ladies. I'm, I'm no. Sorry. No! Oh, come on! Don't take these backsies! Man, not again. This keeps happening. Today, I wanted to eat a croissant. Croissant? So I went to a place that sells croissant. croissant. And I bought a croissant. Croissant? And I re Love is a five letter word. What? Because it's incomplete without you. Lavu? No. Luav? Stop it. Monster! Fight me! No. Oh, nice. Another servant come to be my little toy. Come then, little toy. Come kneel before me. I said, fight me, monster! <laughs> Yes, yes. And I said... Kneel! Step one. Roll persuasion. Hmm. It's a three. What does that mean? Uh, we're just gonna move on. Uh, step two. Tempt their inner dice goblin. Ooh, shiny forbidden candy. Oh. Uh... Oh no. Okay, uh... Step three, inspire them. Going to the movies. Okay, Aragorn. <laughs> wow, that's what D&D is like? That was really cool. Why didn't you tell me that was what it was like? Okay, now it's time for step four, resources. Here, this is playdnd.com. It's a great way to get started. It has free character sheets, good resources to look at, all the info you're gonna need. Ooh, this makes a lot of sense. W when can we start? Uh, I can do Thursday. Uh, I can do Mondays, but only after 6 p.m. when there's a full moon and when Mercury's in retrograde. Okay, so now we're into step five. Scheduling. Rowan, just get down here! Not like this! I'm squishy! Are you serious? I can't. You know, well, people are watching. We are in a blood battle, and you're more concerned that people are watching you? Yeah. Could you tell the enemy to turn around? I am not gonna ask them to turn around. You know, you could have asked them to turn around by now, but no, you are deciding to argue with me. What's going on over there, you two? <laughs> she poked me with a D4. <laughs> <laughs> and said, doesn't that hurt? And said, yeah. <laughs> that one, really that one doesn't really hurt. That one's, really that's a sharp one. Oh my gosh. Sure. Uh, doesn't that hurt? Point. Ow. <laughs> when it's just about to whip up and be like, uh... 70 damage. Bobby yeah, Yaga exactly. Does. <laughs> Bobby Yaga does 95 damage. <laughs> to all of you. Yeah. To the um. ziggurat. There, the innocent blood you have spilled on the steps of Notre Dame. I am guiltless. She ran. I pursued. At least try to sound sophisticated when you threaten someone. Dost thou wish to engage in a duel, my good bitch? Somehow that was worse. You like me because I make jokes and I play songs and I give you a warm place to stay at night and I feed your fucking chicken and I heal you in battle but you don't really care about me. Come on. Let's be honest with each other. You don't really give a shit about me. We travelled into the fucking Nine Hells to get Pike a set of armour. 
We went and battled a city of vampires so Percy could feel good about his name. We fought Goliaths for Grog. We travelled across planes of existence so you could fix your fucking daddy issues. But you've never done anything for me. Ever. You've never risked anything. You don't know me. You don't know anything about me. What's my mother's name? What's her name? Easy question. I died in front of me. Killed by a goblin. Biggest part of my life. What's her name? My father. Is he alive or dead? How old am I? Where's my fucking dog? It's fine. I'm just a little hungover from being dead. And I've just been thinking for a while and... Well... You know... Grog has Pike. Vax has Keelan. Percy has Vax. But Scanlan... There's no one. I had one chance at one real relationship with my daughter and I feel like you've gone and fucked it up too because you don't really know me and you don't really know what my relationship with her is like or what I've promised her or anything really that's fine when I met you all I was just a funny little man playing songs and that's all I'll ever really be and that's okay worked up. What are you worked up about? Well, I just want you to say, I promise you I'll be here, and you're not saying it, and I'm getting, feels like something's fishy. Listen, I can't fucking promise real lifey shit move around the world. I can promise feelings, I can promise I love you, but I can't fucking promise I'm going to be here for sure. I plan to be fucking here, but I don't really know. Oh, well, then I guess I can't fucking promise that I can do this. That's messy. Manipulation's easily more fun. A little guilt a lot of force, of course you have to lie Remind them that without you they shrivel up and die They only had themselves to blame If you'd been there you'd do the same So work them hard till they fall in line There's one way and it's only mine You sure about that? You sure about that? You sure about that? Eat a two-week-old unrefrigerated pie. Dumb ways to die. All right, do you guys have your character sheets? Yep, I rolled a half-elf warlock. Warlock is a brain-dead class. What are you going to do, Eldritch Blast? Fuck you, Donald. What the hell did you build? I'm playing an Asimar sorcerer. I'm showing you what a real fucking god can do. I made a Kenku Rogue. Go figure that you would be a squawking, shady fuck, Sleepy Joe. Whatever, man. I got that sweet-ass sneak attack damage. I'll be stealing all your fucking kills, no cap. I swear to fuck, you better not steal my kills, you fat feathered bitch. Statistically speaking, no one will be stealing kills. All XP is shared in my campaign, so it doesn't matter who gets the killing blow. This isn't an MMO. It's not about XP, it's about winning. If I did the most damage, it's my fucking kill, and no one better fucking Jesus steal Christ, it. Jesus Christ, here we go again. If any of you asshats even target something I twin cast on, I will flip this fucking table. <laughs> what in the fuck are you laughing at, you oversized chicken? Guys, we haven't even started playing. Can you knock it off? I want to kill you guys with goblins and shit. Hey, what's that over there? Sneak attack! I emerge from the shadows, sneak attack, bonus action, I return to the shadows. Go ahead, cast fireball in this tiny room, I'll just dodge out of the way. Oh, and by the way, sneak attack! Sneak attack! I attack the god of chaos. He's a god, you miss. Um, but I don't. I use stroke of luck. And of course, sneak attack. Drifter begged him, please, as he raised his fist before he spoke. I am the righteous hand of God, and I am the devil that you forgot. And then I saw her face.
are trying to build a D&D character using all of these things. That is an amazing start. I made some huge mistakes last time. But I still think I want to take its strength. Because I think that's the best thing it's going to give me. Starting strong. What I don't want to do is wait on HP and AC. Because that messed me up last time. Fulets. They have like a really cool... Burrow speed, right? That would be dope. But maybe I want to fly. Yeah, I'm gonna take their speed. I'm gonna do it. I'm honestly psyched about that. That was a great choice. Uh, no repeats, though. I wish I could because their con is insane. Gelatinous cube. Constitution. Constitution. Give it to me. We are feeling good, baby. I'm less excited about that, but I'm going to take their ability this time. I'm taking pack tactics. I'm feeling good. We're cruising through this one. Owlbear, I took their AC last time and that was a bad take. I'm going to take their... I'm going to take their dexterity. It's fine. It's not great, but it's fine. It's fine. Now we're talking. Now, now, we're, now we're talking, okay? Because for a Drider, I'm going to take their... Wisdom. I'm gonna take their wisdom. Their armor class is insane. This is exactly what I wanted to avoid. It was holy Jesus. Um. Oh no. Are they wisdom or career? Are they intelligence or charisma casters? I don't know. I'm. Oh no. <laughs> I messed this up. It's so bad. I think they're charisma casters i'm gonna take their charisma y'all y'all must have been screaming at me right there because it's intelligence but and now you want to probably would have been a better charisma than intelligence do i take their ac you want to must have pretty good ac right i'm gonna take the mm, god i'm gonna take the wanties ac we started so strong we started so strong on this one orcs i'm gonna take an orcs hp i'm gonna take their hp this has turned against me so hard. This got so bad. I'm going to take the vampire's intelligence because it's all I have left. What a glass cannon. This was a real mixed bag this time, gang. Great. <laughs> Fucking great. For watching, if you liked the video, please like and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. And um, hopefully you all liked the last video which will be not about d and I'll see you all next week. Later. Why are you not a utilitarian? Because it's a terrible system. You can get away with anything. No, you can't. Yes, you can. You just have to wait. What do you mean you just have to wait? Take the trolley problem. Utilitarians believe that, all things being equal, you should pull the lever, right? Yes, all things being equal, you sacrifice one life so you can save the five. Greatest good for the greatest number. Or in other words, the ends justify the means. Well, but here's the strange thing. In order to do any utilitarian calculus between an event and its consequences, you have to pick an arbitrary moment in time to weigh up all the good and bad that's happened as a result of that action. But because time doesn't end, that is never justified, because there's always going to be more consequences that follow on from that. So your objection is that this is invalid because there will always be more consequences? Right. If the universe ended one minute after it ran over the one person rather than the five, we'd know it was the right call. Because it maximized good and then it was game over for everyone. But obviously that doesn't happen. There are second and third and fourth and tenth order consequences to every action. Maybe by saving the five they end up murdering ten, or perhaps one of their descendants kills thousands. But they might not. My point is, at any point in time following any action, you will be able to draw a direct causal link to either more good having been caused by it, or more harm having been caused by it. And you need only wait until that moment to justify your action as being the correct one. Is that true though? Surely there are lots of actions whereby, no matter how far down the chain of consequences you go, all those consequences are negative. What in this world only has negative consequences? So many things, such as... Like, the invention of nuclear bombs. The same physics that enables nuclear power. But when you weigh that against all those deaths... But who's to say what the alternative would have been to them not being invented? Perhaps their existence minimized harm? 
And how do we know that, a hundred years from now, they might be absolutely necessary to stop, say, an asteroid from destroying the entire Earth and eliminating all sentient life completely? But it's entirely unreasonable to ask people to assess the tenth order consequences of their actions. I agree, but it doesn't stop those consequences from being real, from still mattering from a utilitarian perspective. It's like the parable of the Chinese farmer. How the hell are you supposed to know, on a small scale, whether your individual actions are going to lead to long-term good or bad? Look, I agree it's difficult, or perhaps maybe even outright impossible, to predict the long-term consequences of any action on extremely long time scales. But you absolutely can maximize good on short-term timescales, like days or weeks or months or but years. But time as a whole is much, much longer than that. And optimizing for short-term good or pleasure is not at all the same, or equivalent to, optimizing for long-term good or pleasure. Just ask any drunk or drug addict. On any given day, they're optimizing for pleasure, but they're not doing that over the course of their entire lives. The days just don't add up that way. How do utilitarians know they're not doing exactly the same thing? But we can't live our lives for the moral good of some far off future thousands of years from now. Why shouldn't you? Because that's absurd. Look, I'm only taking utilitarianism to its logical conclusion. You wouldn't say someone's life is less valuable if they lived in a different country, if they were separated from you by some vast space, would you? Obviously not. So why is separation by time any different? Physics even tells us that space and time are part of the same fabric. Someone's life today is just as valuable as someone's life a hundred years from now. Fine, I agree. The problem is, I don't really think this changes anything because you can only do your best with the information you have available to you at the time, so... Let's take utilitarianism seriously, really seriously. If you're a true utilitarian, you should be trying to maximize the good for the time span of when sentient and human life exists, however long that window may be. And as far as we know, trillions of humans could exist in the future, living across galaxies, living lifespans much longer and much better than ours. I mean, if we don't screw things up. And given how good that future could be, are you not justified or indeed even obliged to do absolutely anything to the comparatively minuscule present to bring that future about, to maximize the good. But didn't you say we can't predict the consequences of our actions in the long term? Through the lens of a single action on a single day? Of course not. But if you take a broader perspective... The doomsday clock sits at 90 seconds to midnight. If you needed to sacrifice 4 billion lives to preserve the future of trillions, how is that any different to the trolley problem? Compared to the moral weight of that future, the present's nothing. You could justify anything. All of us today are as sacrificial as the one person on the track versus the five. So you think either utilitarians are short-sighted and misguided, or they're not. Which makes them dangerous.